Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. On Sunday, President-elect Donald Trump announced that Stephen Bannon would be his chief strategist at the White House. Stephen Bannon is a former naval officer and ex-Goldman Sachs employee and is the executive chairman of Alt-Right, a Breitbart news service. He has spent at least the last eight years bringing together various right-wing individuals and organizations to attack both the establishment Republicans and Democrats and push forward his own perspectives of a right-wing United States. To discuss this, I'm being joined by Rabbi Elisa Wise. She's the director of Jewish Voice for Peace and has just released a public statement on behalf of JVP under the heading, JVP on choice of white supremacist, anti-Semitic, Islamophobe, Stephen Bannon, as chief strategist. I thank you so much for joining us, Rabbi Wise. Thank you for having me. Rabbi Weiss, you suggested that Bannon is a white supremacist, anti-Semitic, Islamophobe. But what is it specifically that he has done to deserve all of these labels? So Bannon's uh, media outlet, Breitbart, has been the media home of the alt-right in the United States. Um, and the alt-right, you know, has now, as it's finding its place within the White House, um, demands a lot of scrutiny. So as we look back on what Breitbart has um, and what Bannon himself has said about the guests, for example, that he's had on the show, for example, Pamela Geller, who you might have heard of our campaigns at Jewish Voice for Peace Against Islamophobia because she has put um, advertisements on the side of buses and on subway stations um, kind of in, with the most grotesque and vile and vitriolic um, depictions of Muslims. And his response to her is, she's a real American patriot, right? So this person who has really become the face of the most vile forms of Islamophobic sentiment is to him a definition of American patriot. And she appeared not just once, but seven times on his show. And she's just one of multiple um, kind of figureheads of white supremacist, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic ideology that he not only engages, you know, obviously within the media, it's okay to engage with people you disagree with, but then goes on to support them, to praise them, to encourage the listeners to follow their, um, their work and support it. Right. And, um, you know, so that in, the, in and of itself is enough reason um, to have pause. And there's, there's numerous examples of his um, own personal sentiments, you know, uh, as far as anti-Semitism goes, which we at Jewish Voice for Peace understand to only be able to understand in the context of Islamophobia, in the context of white nationalism and white supremacy, is his, you know, complaining that there were too many Jews at his um, children's school. And, you know, that in and of itself might not be concerning, but when you have a picture of a person who is really the godfather of the alt-right movement, whose kind of foundation is white supremacy and white nationalism. Right. And Rabbi, you have his... Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rabbi, so Stephen Bannon as chief strategist for Trump is obviously going to be setting the stage for national discourse, and it's really right. problematic given the examples you just provided us. But uh, by appointing him... Uh, you know, obviously, Trump is prepared to take some of the flack for this and the consequences of such an appointment. Um, uh, and, and it's also not unusual for a president uh, who uh, has just run for uh, election and, and someone has assisted him in that endeavor uh, to get appointed to some prominent position within the White House. Um, but uh, but this one is particularly colored with, uh, uh, with a certain history. Um, do you think that he will uh, be able to continue uh, with such an appointment um, on, his, uh, on his set of advisors or counselors as, as uh, he has done? Because sometimes these appointments get appointed and then soon after uh, the public reaction or outcry, um, they get uh, either dismissed or moved to someplace else so less prominent. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I certainly hope not. You know, I know the Southern Poverty Law Center, whose 
work it is to track white supremacists um, and is has, you know, called for action to kind of resist and fight this appointment. And I'm hoping that people will respond to that and encourage that to be rethought. But I think even if he if a new uh, there's a new chief strategist appointed, it still remains that this is a choice that Donald Trump thought was appropriate. A person who has an open embrace, fervor and of uh, racism and xenophobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism. And I think it's really significant because in the wake of his election, you know, we've been hearing some, you know, like, let's see what he does. Let's give him a chance. Right. And here's one of the first things that he's done. And it just is a further confirmation of exactly what we saw throughout his campaign, where those um, were the hallmarks of his campaign, really. So it's really just a confirmation of what we've seen, even if um, Bannon is replaced with somebody even a bit more moderate. Uh, Rabbi Weiss, uh, apparently uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu had called uh, Donald Trump upon his victory and congratulated him. And Donald Trump said that um, Netanyahu would be one of the first people invited to come and visit the White House. Um, how does this jive when, when he's just appointed somebody who's so uh, anti-Semitic um, and, uh, and is now going to be representing uh, Trump at the White House? House. Uh, how, how does he deal with the Netanyahu? And is there, or is there a, uh, some sort of um, similarities between the uh, yeah. right-wing governments here? Right. Well, it's a really interesting question, and I think kind of it makes us and people in the Jewish community confront kind of the inherent contradictions between Israel claiming to be a Jewish state and act in the interest of all Jews and then align itself with Trump, who is aligning himself with anti-Semitism, right? And so there's a there's a very glaring contradiction that's being brought to light here, which, you know, for our work at Jewish Voice for Peace, we see this as, you know, a mirror of what we've been watching with horror over the past decades as Israel's far-right government um, deepens the violence, hatred, and repression um, of Palestinians and kind of non-Jewish citizens of Israel. And we are kind of bracing ourselves seeing the Trump and Netanyahu alliance, right? And this is going to be actually a very significant moment for Jews where, you know, they're going to, so 76% of the Jewish community um, voted for Clinton, right? So these same Jews are now going to be have to be faced with Trump, this person who represents so many reprehensible things that go against their values, and see the right-wing government of Israel embrace him and cheer his victory, right? And so, you know, we, at, just as we don't sit idly by and watch Israel um, kind of displace and violate um, Palestinian rights, we will not do the same here in the U.S., all right. Uh, we'll be watching closely, as I'm sure you will be. Um, what do you suggest to those people who are feeling like you are in terms of these appointments and Trump uh, taking uh, the White House? Um, you know, there are protests happening across the country uh, in the last few days. But what do you suggest that people do in order to uh, protest this uh, appointment and much more that might be coming? It's a great question. And I think, you know, one of the hallmarks of the movement for justice in Palestine in the past number of years has been a boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. And at the heart of what that movement is, is non-cooperation with the status quo. And I think that's what's called for now here. Um, we need to refuse to cooperate with the policies of the Trump administration that are racist, sexist, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, or otherwise infringe on civil liberties. You know, we this is a time for people to deepen their commitment um, to organizing and find the org community organizations that best reflect their values and take part. You know, this this is a moment where the organizations and the movements that have been building for decades are really well prepared to hit the ground running in this time. And so we need each other, both emotionally um, in this time, but we also need each other because it's only going to be a grassroots movement that will be able to ensure that people's rights and safety are protected during this dangerous time of a Trump administration. All right. Rabbi Elisa Weiss, I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.
And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.